So good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are joining me for the very first time, my name is Dahlia, and I have been teaching and sharing from the Word of God. But today is Friday, yes, and you know what time it is. It is prayer time Friday. Glory to God. We know that prayer is important. Prayer is necessary. Prayer is a part of the believer's lifestyle. Now, I always remind you every prayer Friday to remember that prayer is a dialogue. Prayer is not a monologue. So, you know, don't be like, you know, when we were in certain churches, you just go up, you say what you have to say, and then you just walk out. No, you pray, you talk to God, but then you give God time to talk back to you because he does. He talks back to you. Amen. So remember, pray, listen, meditate, listen, talk, listen. All right. Because you will see as you practice prayer, as you pray more often, you get into a relationship with God. And I'm telling you, there is nothing that's hidden in your life. There is nothing that God would not do for you. I know it might seem like you're sinking. Your trial is overwhelming. Oh, but if you would just trust God a little bit longer, you'll see he will bring you through that. But you've got to trust him. You've got to pray. You've got to seek his face and he will make a way for you. This prayer theme, I usually give you a theme. And again, go somewhere where you are undisturbed and you're not distracted and pray. Pray, pray, pray. It's not about how long. It's not about the time. You see, because many times people think that prayer is quantity. It's not how long you pretend to pray or whatever. Okay. It's the quality. All right. So you go somewhere where you're not, you know, you're not going to be, there's no interruptions and you just listen and meditate and meditate on the word, get a scripture, you know, especially if it pertains to something that you're going through. Some people need healing. Some people need restoration for their families. You know, find a scripture that, that pertains to what you're believing God for. You want deliverance, you know, you want help. Go to the scriptures. The word is there. You see, this is why it's important that you know the word of God. Because when you go and you look and you study the word of God, you'll see that there's a scripture for everything that you're going through. And you can take that scripture with you as a part of the contract to God. And you can say, Lord, I am standing on this word. I am standing on your word that says this, that says that, that says, God, you will provide. You know, in Philippians, when the apostle Paul says, my God shall supply all of your needs. If you are in need, that's the scripture to stand on. And you take that word and you say, Lord, this is what your word says. You will prov provide for all of our needs. I'm coming to you now with this situation. Amen. So this prayer theme today is distraction. Mm, distraction. It may seem like an easy word. It may seem like, you know, and it is. It is. But it's a big thing when you're serving God. It's a big thing if you allow distraction to overtake you and if you fall for the distraction. So um, the scripture that I'll be reading from um, will be Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 3. And it says this. And I sent messengers unto them. Now, this is Nehemiah speaking. And he says, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Listen, why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Oh, I'm telling you. All you've got to do is read God, read God's word and you've got your answer right there. And so remember now, life, you know, gives birth to many, many battles. In life, you're going to have battles. You get up tomorrow morning, I guarantee you, they're going, they're, you know, you're going to have some challenges. You're going to be facing some situations. But it's how we approach it and how we strategize that will lead us 
to victory or help us to get to the victory. You know, one of the enemy's weapon that he uses against the saints of Jesus Christ is distraction. Now, what exactly is distraction? Let's take a look at it. Okay. Distraction means a thing that prevents you, someone, from giving their full attention to something. Distraction is um, a thing or a situation or a person that prevents you from giving your full attention to whatever it is you need to give your attention to. But when you dig deeper into the word, Distraction can also mean, or it also means extreme agitation of the mind or emotions, extreme agitation of the mind or emotions. And this is where the enemy defeats us because he gets us agitated in our mind and it builds into our emotions and then we lose focus. We lose focus off of our purpose, off of what we're supposed to be doing. Here, Nehemiah was busy building the wall that he, God, you know, promised him. And they were working and building the wall that these same people who are telling him to come down to come have a conversation. These were the same enemies that plotted to kill every single worker that would go to work on the wall. And so here comes this, you know, uh, this group telling Nehemiah, let's have a meeting. Let's have a meeting. And Nehemiah said, no, I'm doing a great work. Why should I cease? Why should I cause the work to stop to come and talk to you? And if we would tell that to the devil today, why should we stop worshiping God? Why should we stop praying? Why should we stop studying the word of God to address the devil and to sit in depression and to let anxiety eat us up and to sit and fret and worry or to walk away and doubt God? Why? And these are distractions because what? He agitates your mind. And once he can agitate your mind, he can plot his victory over you. Distraction takes us off our purpose and it chips away at us in small doses. My God. It chips away sometimes at us in small doses. And when it does, it does just enough damage in the right way to stall your manifestation. Mm -hmm. It chips away at us if we allow the distraction and it stalls the manifestation. Why? It stalls the manifestation because you have ceased to work. Nehemiah said, why should the work cease? Look at the word. Why should the work cease while I leave it? while I leave it to come down to you. When you give in to distraction, you are coming down to distraction. You see, when you go to church sometimes and the word of God is being taught by the preacher and the pastor, you know, you're looking at your phone. You got to check your email. You got to look at um, Instagram, Facebook. When the word is coming to you, the word that would give you life, the word that will save your life. You know, many people sit in church and they're too busy. They can't put their phones down for one second. You know, sometimes like when I go to churches and I'm preaching, I remember recently I was preaching and I was preaching the word and teaching the word. And I know the folks were tired, you know, and I said, maybe they shouldn't have had the service at this hour. And this one guy was on the front row, laid back and asleep. But I kept the word going, you know, because the other people were enjoying the word, but he fell out sleeping. At the end of the service, he did apologize, but that's also a distraction. You know, the enemy will come and, and, and distract you in whatever ways to keep you from hearing the word that will deliver you, the word that will save you. Nehemiah said, why should the work cease? Why should you stop praising God to go argue with somebody? Hmm? You walk into church and the usher says, sit here and the enemy gets into you, agitate because he said, oh, the usher spoke to you funny. She looked at you funny. And in your mind, you start getting agitated like, mm, I saw her look at me funny, right, right? <clears throat> 
right? And then you go to your seat and all the while it's eating at you. Oh, I think she looked at me funny. And then you try to find somebody to gossip to to say, do you know that girl? You know, it's a distraction. It's a distraction because when your mind is distract, distracted and your emotions get involved, you miss what God is saying to you. So don't be distracted. Don't let the enemy agitate you because why? It's his way of stalling the manifestation, stalling the power of God, stopping the work of God in you. In some situations, we need to hold our peace. Yes. In some situations, we need to hold our peace and stay on purpose. Nehemiah did not what? He didn't stop and he didn't pause. He didn't stop and he didn't pause. Look what he did. The Bible said he sent messengers to them. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, you just get into this word. He sent messengers to them. He didn't sit and write a letter. He didn't. He sent messengers to them because it's like you tried it. You tried it. He sent messengers to them. And sometimes you've got to hold your peace and stay on purpose. He did not stop, nor did he pause from his purpose to engage with the enemy. You see that? He did not pause or stop to engage with them. He sent somebody else. He sent somebody else to go talk to these jokers because he knew the plot was when he came up, the work would cease. He was the leader. The work would cease and it would slow down and they would detain him and detain him and detain him until they find some other way to do away with him. Don't fall for the trick of the enemy. The Bible said Satan comes with trickeries or wiles of the devil. He comes in all shapes, sorts, and forms. But you got to be on the lookout. Distraction is that agitation of the mind. You wake up and you think somebody looked at you funny or said something and you go to bed with it. You meditate on it. No, put it out of your mind. Go back to worshiping God. Go back to seeking God. Go back to praying and talking to God. And you'll see quickly that thing will leave. And then the next day when you see the person, they'll tell you, child, I had a stomachache. Ooh, I thought I was going to pass out. That's the reason they looked at you funny. Because they stomach, the stomach was grumbling and rolling like a you think a Mack truck was up in their belly. Come on now. They weren't looking at you funny. It's the pizza they ate, you know, two minutes before they saw you. And he gave them indigestion. So he did not pause or stop from his work. He sent messengers. So don't allow your emotions to overthrow you. Don't allow your emotions to cause your focus to shift from off God. Hold your peace and trust God. He promised to lead you and guide you into all truth. That's what he promised to do. And you will be victorious. I will couple with this. In Proverbs uh, chapter 16, verse 7, it says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh his enemy be at peace with him. That's another powerful scripture. So the part I want to focus on is when a man's ways please the Lord. You've got to please God in whatever you do. And when you, when you are not distracted, you can please God, you see. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to focus on that sister, focus on that brother, focus on that no good pastor you know, and get distracted. Look at him. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. No, 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 no. Let your ways please God. Don't worry about those pastors. Don't worry about that elder, all those people in the church. Let your ways please God. Then God will fix all the enemies that are around you because we have enemies. You know, we do. It's the reality. That's why I said life, when you get up, there are problems, there are battles, because it's just a part of life. So let your ways please God. Let everything you do please God. In all things, in uh, First uh, Thessalonians, it says, in all things, give thanks, because this is the will of God. In everything, it says, in everything, give thanks, because this is the will of God. That's what the Bible said. 
So don't allow yourself to be distracted. Every time something comes to take you off your purpose, to stop you from doing what you're doing, stop and begin to call on Jesus. Begin to praise the name of the Lord. Begin to worship him. And I'm telling you, it will leave you. Don't get distracted in your mind. Don't stop what you're doing. Don't let the work of God cease to argue with the enemy. Sometimes people just want you to argue with them. <clears throat> you know, some people just like to argue. And they pick a fight with you. But don't get into an argument. Nehemiah didn't argue with them. He just sent word. I'm not coming down. I'm not going to stop the work of God to come and talk to you. Don't cease your purpose. Don't get off track. Don't be distracted. I hope this word was a blessing to you. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, go with God and continue to be a blessing. Because you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for watching.